Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I appreciate that we get to come together this night around bread and wine. Here, Jesus literally pours himself out in love for us. And he also gets to the heart of what is expected of us. You see, Jesus has set the tone. And we are simply invited to follow. And yet we will only do it imperfectly at best. And tonight we also hear Jesus telling us to love. And this can sound weird. This is a much different take on love than we normally think of. We have things that we love. I happen to love Diet Coke. I love my college hoodie. And especially today, we love those twins. But we also talk about love and relation to others. We love our families and our friends, and many of us have great love for our pets. But what does love mean? Many times it is used to describe an emotion, a feeling. The Greek word eros is a passionate love. Philio is Love of family. Think about Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. There's a pastor, Brian Stafford, and he writes about the love that Jesus lives. And he talks about the love that Jesus shows like this. He said, I doubt that Jesus had warm feelings for us when the soldiers made fun of him. I doubt that he had warm feelings for us when the crowds were yelling insults at him. I doubt if he had warm feelings for us when he was hanging on the cross. But his actions were needed to help us, to bring us salvation. And it is obvious from the reaction of the crowds that Jesus was not the kind of savior they wanted He didn't always give them warm feelings, but he is the kind of savior we need. And out of love, he suffered and died for us. His agony had to have been motivated by much more than warm feelings. The kind of love that we are talking about here in Greek is called agape. This is the self-giving love, the kind that Jesus shows for us and the kind that he is teaching about tonight when he tells us to love one another. Jesus isn't instructing us to get feelings for one another, but we are told how to treat one another. Now, I grew up on country music. One song really gets at this, and it's an old Clint Black song talking about love. Clint sings, love is certain, love is kind, love is yours, and love is mine. But it isn't something that we find, it's something that we do. Love is an action. Love is something we can do. And Jesus invites us to love God and to love neighbor. We are to order our words and our actions in a way that show this to one another. I personally have a hard time with this. There have certainly been times when I have asked my husband Aaron to do something that just isn't fair. And then I will look at him with a smirky grin and I will tell him, I love you. I feel the need to say the words, I love you, because my actions didn't show him that. A couple of years ago, we had a dog, Wiley. He happened to know the word treat, 
so we couldn't say it. So right before we would leave for the day, we would go to give him his treat, but since he knew the word, instead of saying, did you give Wiley his treat yet, we would have to ask, did you love Wiley yet? Because in dog terms, love equals treats. And as we think about what Jesus is asking us to do in loving one another, I always find myself going back in Scripture Because anytime I hear the word command and this new commandment that Jesus gives, I, I go back to those Ten Commandments. And in those Ten Commandments, they generally tell us what not to do. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain. You shall not murder. You shall not covet. But Jesus takes all of these commandments and sums them up in a way to instruct us on what we are to do. It tells us how to live, how to spend our lives. And we are to spend the whole of our lives loving one another. And by doing this, Jesus says, everyone will know that we are his disciples if we have love for one another. And it's not easy. It takes all that we have. But it is such a gift to work toward love. And this training to live a life of loving one another, it begins really early. I have a story from one of my professors, and he says, when Frank was about nine or ten, he found himself in an argument with his younger sister. And before long, it turned into pushing and shoving. And then pushing and shoving turned into hitting. And just as Frank had pinned his sister on the ground, fist raised in the air, his mother came in the room. Franklin, she hollered, stop that. And at that, as Frank would tell it, he turned his head to his mother as only a young boy can do and said, she's my sister. I can do anything I want to her. At which point, Frank's mother swooped across the room, towered over him, and said, She's my daughter. No, you can't. And that's the law. God's gift to protect and to care for God's children. And I know that we at times feel a negative impact or threat of the law. But it is because God cares so deeply about God's children, all of God's children, that we are given this law. No, you can't hoard. No, you can't discriminate or exclude. No, you can't violate and exploit. Because she is my daughter. Because he is my son. So what then is your picture of God? This question came up as Luther had students who were staying with him. And when that question came, he responded, When I think of God, I think of a man hanging on a tree. It's because in the cross of Christ, we see God's love poured out for the whole world. And we are reminded that God will go to any and all lengths to communicate just how much God is in love with each of us. And we, in turn, are called to share that love. And tonight we come, and we get to see Jesus poured out in love in ways that are so amazingly ordinary. Here we have bread, here we have wine. Here we touch and taste and see our Lord. And in this meal, we are proclaiming his life, his death, and his resurrection. And it's reality for each of us. Because for you, the Lord has given his very life. For you, love comes in the form of a Savior who gives his very self. So when you come to the communion rail, receive the body and blood of our Lord. 
It's also there that you will hear the sweet word of absolution, the word of forgiveness proclaimed, because God loves you so very much. And so into the middle of whatever is stirring within your life right now, God comes bringing nothing but love for you. So this night, touch and taste and see the Lord. Thanks be to God for this day. Thanks be to God for this time together to share in this meal of grace and forgiveness. And thanks be to God for the command that we hear to love one another just as we have been loved. Amen.